The BBC's China media analyst, Kerry Allen, gave me more details on this. It's becoming clear that, particularly from the Chinese media, that they didn't control this soon enough. I mean, we're starting to see actual criticisms from state media themselves about how the local government in Hubei province have actually dealt with this. I mean, some of the reports I've been seeing today from top newspapers that are very closely associated with the state, they've been asking questions about why it's taken so long. Particularly, people have been filming within their cars, uh, toll booths, for example, if they're trying to enter cities in Hubei like Wuhan, and they're getting turned around. I mean, Chinese media is notorious for being quite tight-lipped, but there's been a lot coming out. I mean, we've actually seen reporters who are based in Wuhan stood outside train stations and they've been interviewing people who've been trying to travel. And this is quite frank reporting that we don't normally see in China. So we have seen, for example, people who've been hoping to travel today who've been saying, I wasn't told that trains are suddenly suspended. So yeah, we're not seeing the positives. We are actually seeing raw footage within Wuhan. And one that I saw that was quite confusing as well, it seemed for those present, was a video of what looked like a hospital or a clinic queuing long queues. And I don't know whether this has been shared. I don't know the veracity of this video that that has been shared and whether you've seen it too and whether it's authentic showing people in what seems to be a hospital. Yeah, I've seen quite a number of pieces of footage of Wuhan hospitals that we can verify. I mean, obviously, the government media, they've tried to be transparent. So they've had their official reporting. They've been showing in, for example, isolation hospitals, trying not to make people feel afraid, basically. At the same time, I've also seen footage, and I know from experience, having lived in China, that hospitals are, they're not like, say, here in the UK, where you make an appointment and you go up and you queue and you wait to be seen. Sometimes it's a bit of a free-for-all. You just turn up, you pay as you go. And yeah, there is chaos because people who've had symptoms, I mean, I've been listening to audio recordings as well today of people who said that they've just gone to their local hospital and hope to be seen. And for days on end, even though they think they might have symptoms, they've literally been sent home because a number of these hospitals, there's just so many people hoping to be seen, but they're absolutely pushed to the limits. And it's possible that the most serious are being treated, but there are still cases where there may be potential people who might actually have this virus who are simply being told to go home. And on the flip side of that is what is the government or what are the authorities doing to reassure those people who may feel they have the symptoms but who might just have flu or cold because the symptoms are quite similar? Are they in any way telling them what to do or are there radio announcements or signs or things like that that you've been seeing? Yeah, very much telling people to stay home at the moment and not to panic, but also with the information that's come out, for example, of some of the deaths. I mean, there's been a real emphasis on the early deaths that were announced on these being elderly people who spent a lot of time around wild markets, markets with wild animals in, and many of these people having underlying health conditions anyway. So they were saying it's not going to affect people of all ages, of all types. So they've been saying that this isn't a major concern yet. And that very much reiterates what the World Health Organization said yesterday, that it's not yet a world crisis. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But in terms of the actual media coverage as well, medical specialists who've dealt with SARS, for example, back in 2002, they've been giving reports in media in China and saying that this is not in any way similar to SARS. It's much more controllable and it's not as problematic as SARS was. So a lot of coverage to reassure people and tell people that as long as you wash your hands and you wear a mask and you try not to travel in crowds, you should be okay. And that's Kerry Allen, who's our China media specialist.